Okay. Um, thank you for joining this talk about ODF normalization. Uh, I discovered a uh, uh, since the last days uh, that this is a very bad name uh, because nobody wa knows uh, what should it be. So I discovered a better name, but it's very long. Everything you never wanted to know about ODT files, internals written by LibreOffice. It's a little bit longer, um, but it's also not true. So I think this is better. One thing you never wanted to know about ODT files written by LibreOffice. So, uh, okay, it doesn't look absolutely correct, but I think you get the idea. Um, what is the motivation? Um, we have a, a customer project um, with a document generation system. Um, they are using LibreOffice for creation of ODT files as templates. So they have templates and they are using uh, special uh, languages and uh, 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 engine for generation of, of documents. Uh, it's called FreeMarker and Jot Reports. It's a Java framework. Um, generally, it's just a template system. And uh, this uh, is a script language. And using the script language, um, you can do ifs, uh, loops. Uh, you can replace placeholders. Uh, you can view data and so on. So uh, they are creating from templates documents. So this is the basic part. So. And if you look inside um, the ODT file into the XML, um, you, you will see something like this here. Um, you have a script element with an if, if and a, some condition, um, some text between, and then uh, the end of the if. So I think you get the idea. Um, FreeMarker is running uh, and uh, uh, does an interpretation uh, of these uh, um, expressions and replaces uh, the script element. And then uh, at, at the end, uh, if this uh, condition is true, you get uh, this result here. So. One problem, and the, the main problem for the motivation of, uh, of this talk, is um, in LibreOffice, let's say you have this text in LibreOffice. This is a screenshot from LibreOffice, word one, word two. Uh, just two words, no different uh, format. Um, it's just two words. But it turns out, if you look inside XML and the ODF model behind it, uh, you get different presentations. All these are valid, uh, valid representations uh, according to ODF specification. So for example, you get a paragraph and a text span between, or you get a paragraph and two text spans, or you get a uh, paragraph without text spans, or you get the last one is the most interesting. You get uh, a paragraph and a text span, and a text span, and a text span, and so on. It's all valid. And it could, uh, could possibly um, one possible result. So it turns out uh, the tree structure of the model is not predictable in this case. If you, if you are interested into the structure of the document, um, and okay, that's that's okay if you are using um, in in the in the complete chain of your document generation LibreOffice, then it's not a problem. But if you are using different um, composer, ODF composer, or different, for example, automatic processing tools, which are only working on the ODT files, um, it's not so easy. It's it's a challenge. One example, um, you have a conditional part here. If and a condition, a bool, bool value, um, and 
this is not a problem because if you see um, if uh, this condition is false, then uh, most of it is uh, turned out. It, it's thrown away, so everything not a problem. But if something like this happens in LibreOffice, you get a problem because the closing if is one level, the depth is different uh, than uh, the first uh, expression. And you get, if my bool value is false, you get something like this. And this is a not a valid XML file. OK, so that's the motivation. That's the problem. Additionally, there are uh, additional problems. Um, if you do diffs, diff, uh, if you want to have uh, differences of ODT files and you look into the XML um, and you do some th simple changes in the document, um, you get probably you get many many uh, different uh, structures and a really large diff, uh, and it's not so easy to understand what is uh, what was the the semantic uh, change of this. Um, you get only a bunch of uh, XML changes. Um, also, regression, regression testing, uh, if you are looking into the XML and you do some testing, automatic testing, um, then you get sometimes different um, structure and you get false positives. Um, also, interoperability is a problem in this case um, when you do document generation without LibreOffice. So, what can we do? Different solutions here. Um, for example, you can say, okay, don't do it like this. Throw free marker and so on away. But, yes, you can imagine it's huge investment on, and so on. Um, and the second solution, possible solution is um, fix the most annoying issues on this case. And this is what I call normalization. Um, we do, we have a, a ODT file with, I call it unpredictable tree structure, and I do some transformations, and then I get a normalized uh, structure, and I can use it for automatic processing and comparison. Okay, let's have a look. This is one example for um, you have uh, text spans inside text spans um, and you say okay um, if, I, if I look at the attribute values um, essentially they have the same values so it's there is no difference in formatting it's just um, just a, a XML difference and no difference in the in the in the uh, viewer in LibreOffice, you cannot see a difference. Um, so you can say, okay, I I merge these two uh, text spans. So this is one one possible um, solution for this. Um, you can you if you if you are doing something like this, um, you have different. Uh, different solutions for this. You can use uh, style names for comparison. You can say, okay, text span has style A and the next text span has style A. So you can merge them together. Um, but additionally, it would be very nice if you compare the values of the attributes. So um, the idea is a style resolver. So um, trying to to find out which attribute values are actually used by the ODF composer, in this case LibreOffice, and are they equal, all the values. So just as, as a simple explanation here, um, style resolver, how does it look like? You have here a style. And in uh, ODF, all styles have parents, and the parent could have also a parent, and so on. Uh, and additionally, there are uh, default styles, and 
there are defaults of the ODF consumer from the, these are implementation details, but uh, usually they are not necessary. Um, and the style resolver has to merge all the attributes all, all together, and then uh, we can compare uh, the elements and the attributes. So in this case, we have a style resolver, and we can say, okay, this element and this element have the same format. Additional example here is uh, merge identical span siblings, they are neighbors, and you can say, okay, these two neighbors, you can merge them together. And an additional transformation is this case, you have a text span inside a paragraph and you can remove this text span because there's no additional information. The formats are identical from the paragraph and the text span, so you can remove it. Okay, so um, this is a very special uh, solution for a very specific problem. Uh, it's not a generic solution. So if you want to, uh, want to uh, do it uh, for all the possible cases in ODF files, um, then you have a lot more to do. But it's, it's an evaluation, a first step uh, here. Um, you can do more transformations. You can do, you can support um, doc documents from different uh, ODF composers, different products. For example, different languages. If you have different languages, you have to uh, convert uh, the values, uh, centimeter and uh, inches and so on. Um, names of uh, default styles and so on. These are typical problems. Um, you can try to merge styles if they are not necessary um, and so on. You can create uh, predictable style names and so on. Yo, okay. So this was very short. Thank you. <laughs>